In this episode, we're going to take a look at an idea that Matt Clark is working on that would bring big changes to the way SPS is staked within the game. This is all with an eye towards improving long-term health of the SPS token. If this sounds interesting to you, please stand by. Hey all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying hey, thanks for dropping by. I appreciate your time. If you like this kind of Splinterlands content, please like and think about subscribing to the channel and pass the video around to other friends that you know that play Splinterlands. Okay, let's get started. We are starting out on this screen because this is a recent episode of the People's Guild uh, podcast. And I was listening to it on Friday, so that would have been yesterday, um, <laughs> during lunchtime while I was doing some other things. Um, this was an excellent conversation. Okay, so Matt Clark, Boba Fett, or does he pronounce it Boba Fett? I don't know. Either way, those two guys were on there and uh, talking to the, the People's Guild guys, and this was an excellent conversation. This was two and a half hours. And I can't tell you when's the last time I listened to a podcast for two and a half hours and listened to the entire thing. Excellent conversation, obviously centered around Splinterlands. But the reason I bring this up is because in this episode, Matt Clark put forth an idea he, he's being worked on uh, or he is working on. And it is in relation to improving the long-term SPS health and how the token actually interacts with the game um, and trying to improve things in that light. So this isn't actually an idea to improve the game as such, but it's an idea to improve how we use and stake SPS. Obviously, if I get something wrong, Matt, uh, People's Guild guys, let me know in the comments and I will do... Um, I will provide an update um, as far as what I got wrong. But they've been discussing it. Now, let's go forward with this. Okay, he sent over the, uh, I got the the rough draft of what he's working on. Keep in mind, this is a rough draft. It's in the works. It's not a proposal yet. Okay, so it very much is being discussed. So let's go ahead and jump over to some slides I made. So basically put... And I'm going to read through and use his words here. But like I said, these are being worked on. His idea is to have different levels of staking within the game. And this is basically to incentivize staking SPS for longer periods of time. And if you do so, you get uh, different uh, extras, okay, different higher percentages okay so let's go ahead and look what Matt's written down and like I said uh, third time uh, this is still being worked on so um, once again this is from Matt Clark for extended SPS staking um, after we go through this I'm going to throw in my two cents on how I think it can be tied into the game okay okay so when a player completes the tutorial they're given three classes to choose from trader speculator or gamer Okay, so trader is the most flexible, speculator is in the middle, and gamer is the most rewarding. Obviously, the higher you go, most rewarding requires more staking period. Okay, so all accounts are currently trader accounts. Okay, they can access a quarter of their staked SPS every seven days, 28 days total. That's how we are right now. Um, speculator accounts can access a quarter of their staked SPS every seven weeks. That's 28 weeks total. Then you go up to the gamer uh, terminology class. Uh, like I said, this is all uh, can be renamed, whatever. But um, gamer accounts can access a quarter of their staked SPS every seven months, 28 months total, one month being 28 days for simplicity, 784 days total. Speculator accounts get a two times multiplier on governance vote votes and glint one in battle and a 25 for percent discount on wild season passes okay so just going from the base level trader up to speculator which means that you could only get a quarter of your SPS back every seven weeks versus seven days okay that would get you a two times multiplier on governance votes and glint one in battles and a 25 percent discount on wild season passes 
Now, same idea, you go up to the gamer class, and the gamer accounts get a 4x multiplier on governance votes and glint one in battle, and a 50 times discount on wild season passes. But once again, the staking period goes way up. Okay. Traders at the bottom get 25% of the current voucher rate. That means they will receive a 75% reduction on the vouchers they receive now. Okay. The speculators in the middle get a 50% of the current voucher rate reduction. And the gamers get regular vouchers at the current rate. Okay, And what I could see here is that this would bring down the amount of vouchers going into circulation pretty radically. Okay, uh, Of course, it just all depends upon where people want to sit, uh, where they feel the best sit. But I can see that those that are into the game for the long term wouldn't have a problem extended for the long period. Um, but, you know, that remains to be seen. Either way, that would serve to bring the amount of vouchers that are going into production uh, or going live uh, way down, okay? While a gamer account is powering down any amount of SPS, it gets 2x multiplier to governance votes and glint rewards and a 25% discount on wild season passes and 50% of the current voucher rate. It's treated as a speculator account. Okay, so what we're seeing here is a different set of specifics if you happen to go into a powering down mode where you're reaching or where you're retrieving your SPS. Okay, so if you start to retrieve your SPS, automatically you're knocked down on your discount, you're knocked down on your multiplier, and you're knocked down on the current voucher rate. Now, while a speculator account is powering down any amount of SPS, it gets no multiplier to governance votes and glint rewards, no discount on wild season passes, and at 25% of the current voucher rate, it's treated as a trader account, so the next level lower. Now the lowest end, the trader, while a trader account is powering down any amount of SPS, it gets no governance votes, glint rewards, or vouchers. Moving from trader to speculator or speculator to gamer is instant. Moving from gamer to speculator takes 28 months during which speculator benefits, bonuses apply. Moving from speculator to trader takes 28 weeks during which trader benefits, bonuses apply. Okay, so that was Matt's idea. And like I said, it's still in the working stages. Uh, before I give my overall opinion, um, I want to interject something here. Um, as soon as I heard him talking about this, I thought this would work really well with the conflicts idea. Okay, so with the rebellion conflicts idea, we have this whole setup where you um, the whole idea is to buy conflicts cards and stake them on the battle wagons, and you can go ahead and use them um, towards the overall storyline of the conflict. Okay, so I thought that changing and making multiple tiers of SPS staking would fit in excellently with the whole supporting the rebellion idea. And it doesn't have to just be rebellion, obviously, because it it would go forward past the rebellion set, right? So it would be a different name, but it, was just, it would be the same conflict idea. In other words, you're going to use your SPS and stake it in a conflict uh, or stake it in a way that helps the conflict, and you have three different tiers. And like I said, they can go with different terminology. The whole idea um, is the same though, right? You can come in and stake your SPS and choose a different mode in the conflict, in a different conflict to stake it in a different way, right? And just as Matt's idea was um, to uh, basically have three different variations of how long you stake your SPS and the staking the SPS would bring you in some bonuses the longer you stake it. Okay, So I like that idea and I think it would fit in really well with the whole conflict idea. Okay, um, So with that said, that was my idea and that was my part to this. Um, and we can discuss this going forward. Put your ideas in the uh, show notes um, and we'll talk about it going forward. But overall, I think it's a good idea. Okay, I like the idea of multiple tiers of staking, staking for longer, which theoretically 
The more people stake the more SPS token for longer periods of time, it's better for the token value, right? Now, <clears throat> you'll notice that he did not put anywhere in, in that uh, idea, he did not put increasing the amount of SPS percentage that each staker earned. So in other words, just because you staked for longer, you weren't going to get more SPS percentage-wise, okay? I kind of like that idea. Even if it was you don't stake it for very long, I mean, if you stake it for the shortest period of time, you get a lesser percentage, okay? I don't know how that works on the back end. I don't know how hard that would be to implement. Another idea, uh, another thing that was cast around on Discord was the fact that um, this, even though it's a DAO idea and a DAO thing to put in, it would still require DAO money to the team to go ahead and put into place. Like I said, these are just ideas at this point, and obviously they would have to have a discussion with Matt and the team on how hard they would be to implement, if it would be worth it in the long run, et cetera, et cetera. We're just trying to help the game out at this point. And uh, like I said, with a small team, I think that, uh, you know, putting ideas out um, and especially how Matt's doing it in a well-formed way um, could only help. I mean, obviously they could say, hey, uh, we don't like the idea. It would take too much time and effort. And then that would be that. But uh, obviously after he works on this for a while, uh, it's going to be put up as a DAO proposal and voted on. So it can be voted for or against, right? I think even though I like the idea overall, I think the time periods need to be worked on um, because I think 28 months is a long time okay um, just kind of thinking about it in the terminology of a, a certificate of deposit or something like that a year maybe two years I think 24 months is still a huge hugely long time maybe a year and a half obviously they would ha have to toss it around and people who are better at numbers would have to look at it as far as what the bonuses were um, but I do like the idea of getting a uh, bonus to the glint and go the other bonuses he mentioned I do think that I would really I don't know I would really much rather have a bonus to the percentage of SPS I'm getting on this SPS I have staked, then make more glint. Obviously, the downside of that is putting more SPS into production. But with that said, if you had to stake for t two years, um, you know, obviously there's much discussion around this topic. That's why I wanted to put a little bit more light on it other than uh, the other channels. Uh, there's been a couple other channels that have looked at this as well. Um, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, obviously, we'll talk about this going forward, uh, depending upon where it goes. But I do like the idea. And from my point, I do think it would fit right into the storyline of conflicts, right? Put your money towards the conflict. Help, you know, you know, you know, help the rebellion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, and I think it would fit right in with that storyline. Either way, uh, let me know what you think. This has been Bronze Dragon. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. And I... We'll see you in Splinterlands. Mm -hmm.